What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to the... what's this called? Oh yeah, Animatronic Apocalypse. So, we're going to be reacting to the leaks for Animatronic, Animatronic Apocalypse. Um, I'm assuming you're coming off the back of Summer Canophobia, but the same things apply, like, this is very early, so be careful of spoilers and, like, spoiling it for other people and stuff. But, um, yeah, I'm just super excited to get into this one because I have no idea. Like, I, I genuinely just have zero predictions. Like, I don't know what this is going to be about at all. Clearly, it's going to be about an animatronic apocalypse, but what does that mean? <laughs> so, let's just get straight into it, I think. So, I think this is on the, like, the first page, even before the title. It says, join the Fazbear fan club every Tuesday and Thursday after school for 5th and 6th graders. Room 13, be there or beware of the animatronic apocalypse. Okay, so let, we're going to go through this. It's going to take some time to so get some popcorn. Um, and yeah, let's get going. Glamrock Chica is hunting you. She's chased, in, she's chased you into the school library. Your only weapons are a bow or a spear. Your choice. Roll the dice to see if you maim her before she jump scares you. You need more than three to get away. Robbie Wilson picked up the dice and looked at Tina and Nathan, his role-playing group in the Fazbear fan club meeting. They were one of three groups playing the animatronic apocalypse. Oh, so it's like, a, it's a game. Okay, that's, that's pretty, that's a cool concept. It's like D&D, &D, I assume. Dungeons and Dragons. Um, because in, um, in freaking Felix the Shark, we had crocodiles and caverns, which is basically Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. Um, I choose bow and arrows, Robbie announced. The dice rolled and landed on the game board as four and two. Robbie raised his arms in victory. Yes, I have once again maimed Glamrock Chica. You're too lucky, Nathan complained, but still flashed his braces in a smile. Everyone in this club is a nerd, FYI, fits with the channel name. You haven't been jump scared once today. Can you share some of that luck with us? Robbie claims it's just skill. Uh, he moved his game piece, a wooden figurine that he painted with dark clothes, dark hair and night vision glasses from the library onto the outer school grounds. Now I get to add the three leftover arrows to my arsenal. Glamrock Chica goes into hiding for recovery. Tina wrote down his moves in their animatronic apocalypse game notebook. She was their game warden. Oh, nice. <laughs> Not like Dungeon Master. Um, and, and was in charge of tracking play, reading card commands, and making sure players followed the rules. The Fazbear Fan Club had created the animatronic apocalypse game last year. Each of the club members had helped design the board game using the school grounds and the surrounding neighbourhood as the fantastical apocalyptic world. Really, that's really cool. They would pasted maps of the school onto cardboard and created game pieces out of wooden figurines. Not gonna lie, I really want to make this right now. <laughs> I might do a video where I make this and play it with someone or something. That would be really sick. Um, Robbie's game player name was FF Survivalist, a nod to his love of camping and his love for Freddy Fazbear. Oh, damn it, I thought that meant Fazbear Frights. <laughs> Uh, every year he'd go camping with his parents and his dad always taught him survival stuff. By sixth grade, he knew how to tie knots, start a fire and create a snare. He was in charge of writing the gameplay cards that had to do with environmental danger. So yeah, he took camping and the animatronic uh, apocalypse to a whole new level. He'd been a Freddy Fazbear fan since he could remember. He went to Freddy Fazbear's mega pizza plex practically every weekend. Everyone knew the... Oh... Everyone knew the environment, sorry, entertainment mall had the best arcade, the best mini golf, the best raceway, and also the best animatronic entertainment. Of course, Glamrock Freddy was Robbie's favourite. The club had been a great way to celebrate Freddy throughout the week with other, fra with other fans. Um, everyone knew the animatronic apocalypse game was pretend play, a chance to escape into fantasy before it was time to do their real chores and responsibilities. Every club member had fun with the game. Dang it, that sucks. Their group looked over at Daniel, Daniel, Johnny and Zabrina's game. At least, most of them did. Daniel was always a sore loser. Better luck next time, Zabrina told Daniel. You were just jump scared by Roxanne Wolf. Wow, this, this, this was really needed. <laughs> oh my gosh, I did not send any of this by the way. <laughs> it was Anton, blame Anton. Um... Yeah, well, next time I'm going to find a hatchet and take out any animatronic that comes after me. 
Uh, apparently, the previous club president, also named Jason, good job with story placement, Scott. Huh? Uh, hasn't been seen all week. Why? Why did you point that out? Okay. I sorry. I'm I'm just kind of trying to understand what's going on here. Jason had always managed to ease the tension by making everyone laugh. Every time someone would get upset at losing, Jason would say, "But would it really matter in the middle of the animatronic apocalypse?" Robbie has a friend named Dyson. He was named after the Sphere. Uh, Robbie felt his cell phone vibrate with a text. It was from Dyson. I have practice off early tonight. You want to walk home? Robbie is a good friend, and despite wanting to play more with the club, he barely gets to see his best friend Dyson, as his parents are very strict about his sports and extracurricular activities. Therefore, he never gets to hang out. I gotta go, guys. Finish the game without me. See you on Thursday, Tina said. Robbie's currently going through his growth spurt, and his own dad suggested that he might play basketball due to his height. Talk about stereotypes. Also, Robbie's implied to be neurodivergent, and it's actually handled really well in this story. Good job, Kelly. That's good to hear. That's very good to hear. Uh, he also thought sports would help with some of Robbie's nervous energy, his dad called it. Yeah, Robbie always had a bunch of pent-up energy, but it was all mental. His mind was always focusing on questions. Robbie would always pull apart anything he didn't understand until he found an answer. Obviously, this isn't the only thing saying it, but he stems a lot in this story, so I thought that was cool. Okay. As he left the room, he accidentally bumped into a tall figure in a brown suit. An actual suit, not for now. <laughs> oh, sorry, Dr. Renner. Uh, Mr. Renner, sorry. Mr. Renner, the school principal, stood in the door of room 13, gazing at his cell phone. I just want to say, room 13. 13 is a very um, superstitious number, right? He always liked to wear brown suit and ties. He had a meticulously combed dark moustache and greying black hair. He always seemed distracted and acted if, as if maybe being an elementary school principal hadn't been his first career choice. Take it easy there, Robbie. Bro is studious. You must always pay attention to where you are going. Kids were intimidated by just his voice alone. He'd been known to get kids to confess to breaking rules even when there weren't any witnesses. He walked past Robbie reading his phone, not looking where he was going. Typical adult. Guess younger society still carries on with the phone thing in the future. Uh, yeah. Uh, Robbie spotted something uh, on the phone screen about horse races with lots of numbers. Mr. Renner gambles. Mr. Renner glanced up at the club members. Hello, Fazbear Fan Club. Mr. Finkel had a doctor's appointment today, so I'm filling in as a club chaperone. Carry on with your games. Yes, his name is Mr. Finkel. Yes. Mr. Finkel's classroom was next door. He'd always peek in when he wasn't doing his classwork or cleaning his nose. He made it known to everyone that he had severe allergies with a constant nasal drip. Yeah, he sounds like a Mr. Finkel. <laughs> Robbie doesn't wait to hear what Mr. Renners has to say, so he goes outside the front of the school to meet up with Dyson. The name of the school is Durham Elementary. Isn't that a place? Durham. I don't know. I It, it seems familiar to me. I don't know if we can place that anywhere on a map, but whatever. What's going on at the club? Dyson asked. Not much, just playing animatronic apocalypse. I managed to escape unscathed again, facing off with Glamrock Chica. What's your stats? Eleven in my arsenal. I have a bow and arrows and a throwing spear. Not bad. Hey, you want to hang out at the Mega Pizza Plex this weekend? Can't. Got a game on Saturday, and my, ma and my dad is taking me to the park to practice on Sunday. Come on, Robbie complained. All you do is practice. We used to hang out more. Ask your dad if you can go. All you talk about is playing animatronic apocalypse. This sounds exactly like Stranger Things. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously not, not at all. Like they don't go to the Upside Down or whatever. But uh, ju it's just reminding me of like the Stranger Things plot, like the side plot, I guess, where they they all play D and D and then they like grow up. And I don't remember what the name of the kid was that that went missing all the time. <laughs> but uh, he he was like, I still want to play D and D, but you guys don't. Was that Will? Yeah, that's, that's Will, right? Anyway, I'll stop talking about Stranger Things. Uh, they're quiet now after he said that. They're awkwardly walking home silently. That was sudden, thought Robbie. But he understood that Dyson might be jealous of not having as much free time, so he let it go. Yeah, Robbie agreed. 
You're right. They did not speak the entirety on the way home. Well, see you, man, Dyson said. Yeah, see you. Dyson began walking away, and he walked off into the sunset with his head down. Poor kid. Aw. Right now, the rest is just filler for a couple of pages. Robbie let his dog Hopper, for goodness sake, out, and his parents never came home until late, as they're always working. His mum calls, and one of the frequent habits he does is he constantly crackles his, knuckle, his knuckles, and his mum tells him to stop. She can hear it over the phone. Could you order us dinner? Your choice. But um, maybe not pizza again, okay? His mum said. Uh, now it skips to the next Thursday after he goes to sleep. The story is interesting as its format is told in days of the week. I love that. I love how we're getting different formats for, for stories. And of course, the next story after this is the first part of the Bobby Dots. So that's very exciting. I just want to make one prediction while we're right here. I know it's taking a while to get through this, but I want to make one single prediction. I reckon it's going to be a little bit like the breaking wheel with the whole spiel of the kind of like D&D, &D, like they're doing the D&D. &D. It's kind of like Jumanji as well, where they're doing the D&D &D board game or whatever, and whatever's happening in the game is also happening in real life. So they, they actually get attacked by Roxanne Wolf, or they actually get attacked by Glamrock Chica or whatever. That would be really cool. I don't think that's going to happen, but uh, that's, that's a concept they could have used. Uh, like the board game comes to life. Um, what is it? Art, art portrays or media portrays reality or something. You know when when there's like films about I don't know someone getting stabbed in a shower and then a lot later on it happens. Anyway, what am I talking about? Uh, Thursday, Robbie walked into room thirteen and read an announcement written on the classroom whiteboard. Fast Bear Fan Club president candidates Johnny Miller, animatronic Slayer 08, <laughs> versus Zabrina Z, Zab Fazbear. Confused, Robbie took his regular seat near the back of the class next to Nathan. What's going on? Didn't you hear Jason had to step down as the president of the club? Nathan asked him. Robbie's eyes widened. What happened? His dad got a new job, and he had to move. When did this all happen? Th uh, Tuesday after you left, Mr. Renner made the announcement and asked for candidates. Robbie wasn't sure, but he might have wanted to run for president had he known what was happening with Jason. Annoyed, he grabbed his finger with his left hand and pulled until his knuckle cracked. Then he proceeded to crack each knuckle. Mr. Wren is already sitting down at the main desk. Studious Emma Fur. Uh... <laughs> Mr. Renner was already sitting at the desk with, uh, at the head of the class, looking bored. He tapped a small wooden gavel against a desk. I don't know what a gavel is. Fazbear Fan Club, I told Mr. Finkel I would go ahead and run the vote for the new club president. He waved the gavel toward Johnny. So let's get this ball rolling. Johnny, you're up. Johnny walked up with his crumpled notebook paper in his hand. Bro is nervous. The paper trembled in his fingers as he read, but no one could understand what he was saying. Speak up, Johnny. We cannot hear you, Mr. Renner demanded. Johnny spoke louder, but really fast. I'm Johnny, I'm running for president. It's written like this in the book, by the way. <laughs> Slower, Mr. Renner demanded. Um, I would like to run because I think I would be a good president. I would organise community fundraisers for the homeless and um, we could we could hold a food drive for those in need. Thank you. Johnny quickly walked to his seat to sit and stare down at his paper. Mr. Renner leaned back in his seat. All right, Johnny, that was adequate, I guess. Zabrina, you're up next. Girl boss alert, girl boss alert. Zabrina strolled up to the podium with a confident smile. Hey, Fazbear fan club. As you know, I'm Zabrina. I know this is my first year with a club at Durham School, but I am a big Freddy Fazbear fan. If I'm chosen as the president, we won't be doing food drives. We'll be focused on winning the animatronic apocalypse. Robbie thinks she's actually good because she's using roleplay to excite the members and get them immersed. We'll create a special team to strategize on how to take the Earth back from the animatronic invaders. Her eyes was as big as she spoke with excitement. Sorry, her eyes were big as she spoke with excitement. And of course, every nerd in this room is clapping. Granted, they're like small children, but yeah, that would be cool, Tina said. Count me in, a kid named Rick Astley called out. Uh, so, so vote for me and then join my specialised double-A team. She raised both hands and fists. And together we will win the animatronic apocaly apocalypse. Mr. Renner began clapping. Very nice, Sabrina, very nice, he said, with a strange smirk on his face. And very smart which was a surprise to Robbie. He'd never seen Mr. Renner seem interested in anything. Tuesday. 
Robbie jogged to room 13 as it started to rain. Not only did he like to get to the club meeting early and read the animatronic apocalypse game notebook stats, but he also didn't want to get drenched. When he got to the classroom, he spotted Mr. Renner leaving. Robbie had a moment of relief that he wouldn't be chaperoning the club again today. Sabrina was sitting at her usual seat, staring ahead at the whiteboard. Hey, Sabrina, he said to her. Congrats on becoming the new president. Hey, Sabrina? Silence. Oh, is it glitch trap? I, I don't know how it could be glitch trap, but it's something to do with that, right? The glitch trap cult? Oh my gosh. Oh, it's going to be whoever's the leader gets infected and they just get killed off one by one. Nah, it, it can't be that. Silence. He frowned at the back of her head. You okay, Sabrina? She flinched and shifted around to face him. Her eyes looked a little glassy. Oh, hi, Robbie. Suddenly she's normal. Oh, hi, Robbie. Thanks. I just have a few announcements before we start the gameplay today. I should go quickly. A few minutes later, Zabrina stood at the front of the class and tapped Mr. Renner's small wooden gavel on the podium. Thank you all for voting me in as president. I am truly honoured and I won't let you down when facing off against the animatronics. But first, there will be a few changes with the club and I don't think you'll all care about the changes at all. Could anyone make sure if Mr. Finkel is nearby? I appreciate our supervisor, but I want this to be a students only meeting. Daniel went to check the door. All clear. Cool. Zabrina cleared her throat. <clears> throat> Please close the door, Daniel. <laughs> First up, I've decided we can't use our time doing homework at the club when we need to be planning for the animatronic apocalypse. So what do we do? We copy a classmates. Same goes for quizzes or tests and even reports. Copy notes, copy answers. We have more important things to focus on. As president, I declare that the first 30 minutes of club time is no longer homework. Straight animatronic apocalypse gameplay all the time. Some kids clapped. Robbie wondered where this idea had come from. Zabrina was an honor roll student. Shouldn't homework be her jam? Sixth graders can help fifth and fifth can help fourth. Getting that out of the way helps us to be prepared for the apocalypse, right? Right! Someone piped up. Second, make sure you sign up for my special animatronic apocalypse team or you might just be left out. She looked up at that and Robbie met her eyes for a strange moment. There was something odd about that look, about her, that sent a weird feeling down his back. This is amazing. I love this writing. One moment she had seemed normal, like the Zabrina she, the, like the Zabrina he knew, and now it was like a switch had flicked, and she had become someone he didn't recognize. Third and most importantly, nobody, nobody shares Fazbear Fan Club business outside the club. Not with friends, parents, teachers, no outsiders, period. What stay, what's said in the club stays in the club. Why? Robbie cut, cut in, unable to keep quiet any longer. Why are you being so secretive? The club members turned and looked at him with curiosity. I mean, what's the big idea if... Ideal if... Sorry. I mean, what's the big deal if we share things about the club? We've been doing this for a year and it never mattered before. If you do share, Zabrina slammed the, ga gave, uh, the gavel hard on the podium. You're out. Some of the kids jumped. Zabrina smiled as if she was pleased with their reaction. Pretty simple now. Let me share how the homework lists will work, and then we can start signing up. I've lost the place. <laughs> uh, yeah, my Discord does weird things sometimes. It's because it's loading new messages and then it jumps. Anyway. Robbie shifted uncomfortably in his seat. As Sabrina rambled on, Robbie glanced around room 13. All the members were staring at her intently, taking in her every word. He glanced down on his forearm at his temporary Fazbear Fan Club tattoo. It was one of the Mega Pizzaplex character logos with Fazbear Fan Club underneath. It was beginning to fade. They'd gotten them a few weeks ago. The club had been fun and light-hearted. Sorry, the club had been fun and light-hearted during the past school year. And now he had a weird feeling that things were changing in a not great way. If he was being honest with himself, he knew the club was his escape from the boredom of school and the emptiness of home. His way to have control in a made up world. Now, it was getting too real. Too serious. He rubbed the rest of the tattoo off. Wednesday. On Wednesday morning, Robbie and Dyson walked onto the school grounds and spotted a bunch of kids... Uh, surrounding the lunch tables. Some kids were even taking pictures with their cell phones. Most of the kids were talking and pointing. 
Who do you think did it? Someone is so busted. Robbie peered over his shoulder and his eyes widened. Beware of the animatronic apocalypse had been spray painted in big red letters over the courtyard wall. Holy cow, Dyson said when he saw the image or the damage, sorry. I don't think anyone in our club would do this. He pictured all the club members. They were all quiet kids who liked to talk about Freddy. So Robbie is going to go figure out what is going on at lunch, since the next club meeting would be tomorrow. He, at lunch he found Sabrina sitting at lunch with some of the members. Very very well worded. <laughs> I'm joking. Hey Sabrina, can I talk to you a sec? It's about club business. Yeah, I want to talk to you about something too. Robbie lifted his eyebrows. Okay. Sabrina looked at Dyson. Sorry, no non-members allowed. She looked back at Robbie with that odd smile. You know the rules. I'll go sit at our table. Dyson shrugged, then walked away. Sit down, Robbie. It hurts my neck to look up at you, Sabrina said. <laughs> Damn, okay, Sabrina. He sat down. Go ahead, you first. Why didn't you list your homework reports and rest as I requested? Because that's not what the club is about, he replied. She stared at him. Everyone else did it but you. So? So if you're part of the club, then you have to do what the club does. Are you serious? New club rules. No one else seems to mind, said Sabrina. What's going on with that graffiti on the school walls? What about it? And uh, I'm not going to send the whole speech Robbie has about how vandalism is bad. Okay. Relax. Nothing's going to happen. They have to have some proof someone from the club did it anyway. Robbie slimmed her eyes at her. Do you know who did it? Sabrina shook her head as she stabbed at a crouton, popped it in her own mouth, and chewed... What? <laughs> and chewed. Maybe Afton was right to kill children. <laughs> oh my gosh! That wasn't in the book. That was just Anton saying that, but that's, that's a funny line. Maybe Afton was right to kill children. Wow. Uh, Robbie glanced at the rest of the table. What are you smiling at, Daniel? Was it you? Don't know what you're talking about, Wilson. Daniel sneered and bit into his candy bar. Daniel was about to argue when Sabrina interrupted. Relax, Robbie. You're being too intense. Just don't worry about the paint on the walls. The school's already covered it up. Nothing's going to happen. The club will be fine. Well, I just think whoever did it would put a bad light and make the club look bad. I would think a president would care about that. Sabrina sipped her milk. Too bad you're not the president. Yeah, too bad, Robbie thought to himself as he stomped away from their table. He looked back and everyone seemed to have their he heads close together. It felt weird, as if they were plotting something. I'm not convinced she doesn't know who did it, Robbie said to Dyson. I think she's hiding something. Just then, Mr. Renner walked to the cement block in the middle of the courtyard where the teachers liked to make lunch announcements. <clears throat> Hello, Durham Wildcats, he bellowed. Or Durham. Oh, wait, it could be Durham. I actually think it's Durham. Oops. I want to announce a special election, and all students will be encouraged to vote on changes here at Durham. How does that sound? There was some clapping from the students, but most kids ignored him. Mr. Renner's eyebrows lowered over his eyes. Have you all heard of the animatronic apocalypse? He bellowed out dramatically. Suddenly, the students came alive, with a few cheers erupting around the courtyard. Robbie and Dyson eyed each other in disbelief. Then Robbie swung his gaze over at Sabrina's table with some of the club members. Their cheers were the loudest. Mr. Renner looked almost happy. I thought you might have. An apocalypse is serious business. As a school community, it's time to come together to prepare for this inevitable battle. It's either us or them. The animatronics versus the Durham Wildcats. What was he getting at? Robbie wondered. Why did Mr. Renner suddenly care about some game their club had made up? It's not like every student was involved. Now you might be asking yourself, what is going on? The answer is, I have no idea. Wow, really? Okay. So this is going to be a very obscure story. Which, like, I'm, I'm, in I'm really enjoying this so far. Like, I'm really enjoying this. It just needs a solid plot line and conclusion. And if it doesn't have that, this is going to probably drop from a really really good story to a mid story so that's something that i'm very scared is going to happen here that none of this is going to be answered and that that's a scary thought to me there will be a ballot item what is a ballot item or is it ballot i'm gonna say ballot but i i can't i don't know 
It would be a ballot item called the Faculty Preparedness Initiative. Mr. Renner pointed to the students. Say it with me. Faculty Preparedness Initiative. Faculty Preparedness Initiative. The students repeated the title with him. We need resources to help prepare our teachers and faculty to be able to fight against the dangerous animatronics. We cannot be sitting ducks when this apocalypse happens. We have to be able to protect our students, to protect you. We need you to vote, Durham. Our plan is to move around some funding here at school. Everyone will have what they need. What's most important is that you, our students, will benefit by having your teachers ready and prepared for this animatronic apocalypse so that we can be protected and we can take back our planet. Are you with me? Voting will open tomorrow until Friday after school. Enjoy your lunch. One more thing. No more vandalising school property. If I told you it gets more bizarre, you probably would believe me. And yeah, the story gets more bizarre. Okay, I'm, I'm ready for some under construction kind of stuff. <laughs> I know that's not going to happen again, but... I have no idea where this is going, by the way. Uh, like, where is this going to go? Okay. Uh, Dyson and Robbie are discussing what is going on. That's a good thing to know. It's not like under construction where it's just one person who's going insane. Everybody seems to be confused, or at least Robbie and Dyson are. Maybe he's trying to get the students more involved, Dyson said. Robbie's a smart kid. Robbie leaned t toward Dyson across the table. Don't you get it? He's taking money from somewhere in the school to give more money to himself and the teachers. You know my dad's in banking. He always tells me how funding works. I usually don't pay much attention, but this time, what he told me finally makes sense. Something's not right is all I'm saying. And what's with not being a uh, and what's with not making a big deal over vandalism? Normally he'd be interrogating suspects to get to the bottom of it. Thursday. Mr. Renner showed up to the fan club at meeting after school. Hello fan club. It's great to see many of you working toward the success of mankind against the animatronic apocalypse. Thank you all so much for allowing us to vote on the faculty preparedness initiative. Daniel said to Mr. Renner. Everyone in the classroom says they voted. They all treat Mr. Renner like a hero or a leader to him. Some kind of grand figure. Robbie's trying to ignore everything by checking his game stats and hope Mr. Renner doesn't come toward him, which obviously didn't work. Very good stats, Mr. Renner said. Robbie tried not to buy into whatever Mr. Renner was up to. Your work will come great for the faculty preparedness initiative. You're kidding, right? Mr. Renner raised a bow. A bro a brow. What would I, why would I be kidding? Because, um, it's not real? Something flickered in Renner's eyes before he leaned down in front of Robbie's desk. He was so close, he could smell an unappealing aftershave. What's the matter, Robbie? He whispered to him. Don't feel like playing in the Fazbear fan club anymore? Robbie blinked at the shift in Mr. Renner's tone. It was like he no longer, he, sorry, it was like he was no longer the principal but some mean kid taunting him. He saw a muscle twitch under Mr. Renner's eye. Robbie shifted in a seat, uneasy. I didn't say that, he said quietly. You didn't say what, Robbie Wilson? Renner said. I didn't say I was done with the club, Mr. Renner. Good. I know it's all a game, Robbie, but I'm going to utilise what I need to encourage our students to get more involved here. Uh, yeah. Uh, nothing is wrong with that, is there? Robbie looked up and met his gaze once more. Mr. Renner's eyes seemed to bore into Robbie's head. Even though Robbie didn't agree with him, he shook his head just to get that penetrating stare off him. Good. He then goes up after talking with Robbie and reminds everyone that voting is still open until after school. This is important for you students, so don't let us down. And it helps fill your pockets, Robbie noted grudgingly. More filler, but now Mr. Renner is speaking with Sabrina individually. It is as if she was stuck into his gaze, hung on to every word and carefully listening. Mr. Renner had given Robbie an uncomfortable feeling. Something was wrong. Robbie is now walking home, wondering if he should tell his dad what's going on at school. He was distracted in his thoughts until he leaped what he heard a cat hiss behind him. He, he whirled around, but he didn't see any sign of a cat. There were just cans at the curb, but no animals. He continued to walk down the street. He looked at the homes and didn't see anyone outside. It was strangely empty for a normally busy neighbourhood. This is one of the more random moments. As he walked more, someone threw a rock at him. Yeah, it's random. He turns around and no one's there. Ghost cat threw a rock, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> okay. 
Right. Someone threw a rock at him. Maybe this is going to be a thing where it's like the the the, the epilogues are going to solve this sort of thing. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, but that is weird. Yeah, that that's a, that's a very random moment. Uh, he ran home as his head is bleeding and doesn't want someone to follow him. A couple hours later, his dad came in the front door holding a box of tacos and a leather brief briefcase. Hey, son, give me a hand here. He's talking to his dad about the animatronic apocalypse stuff, and Mr. Renner and his dad is sceptical. Dad let out a sigh. Right, the apocalypse. Robbie, what have, I, what have I told you about fantasy versus reality? Robbie was offended. I'm not making this up, he said in front of the other of the upper grades at lunch. Ask Dyson if you don't believe me. Uh, very cool art of Renner. Sick. Uh, Dad looked at him for a long moment. Sometimes you might think what you see is true, when there's always another side to the story. His dad then tells him to finish his homework, and he'll check in with the school about it tomorrow to see their side of the story. Friday. Bro is doing silent reading. The book was boring. There were no warriors or battles, not even anything about the wilderness. How could teachers expect kids to learn survival skills, he thought. Yes, Robbie. Unrelated teacher to Renner's, by the way. Can I use the restroom, please? May you use the restroom? Robbie rolled his eyes. May I use the restroom, please? Bro got the wooden bathroom pass. Um, he walked down the hall when he noticed Mr. Renners walking out of the school office when speaking with a dark-haired student. It took him a moment to realise the student was Sabrina. He was staring very commandingly into her eyes and told her things, but Robbie could not understand what they were saying. Then he saw Sabrina walk back into the school office, and he could see a glimpse of her, to which she wouldn't even move. He made his way closer to Sabrina. Uh, he expected her to smile or wave. Instead, she started to walk forward. Hey, Sabrina. She strolled past him without saying a word. Hello, Sabrina? Robbie stopped and watched her walk away, without acknowledging him. Weird, he muttered. Just then, a very important looking man and woman stride toward the office with briefcases and stern faces. The man nodded to Robbie and Robbie nodded back. Robbie read on his name tag, Mr. Ted Al Angelo, sorry, school stu superintendent. He figured that they must be very high in the school hierarchy. He wondered why they were here. Since he didn't really have to use the restroom, Robbie took the long route back to homeroom. The scene changes to later in the day. Robbie is walking through the hallways between class and students are chattering. Did you hear that Mr. Renner is leaving Durham? No way! Yeah, someone saw him packing up his desk. His eyes widened. He told his dad about his suspicions about the initiative, and his dad had called the school and must have found out something. This is where it gets interesting. Okay, okay. I'm excited. He walked home later that day as Dyson had practice. As he walked out the school gate, he spotted a bunch of the club kids walking together. Sabrina and Daniel were leading the pack. Robbie frowned. Today wasn't a club day. He's following them from behind slowly because he wants to know if there was a secret meeting. Maybe they had found out that it was his dad that had questioned Mr. Renner's initiative. That had question or had questioned Mr. Renner's initiative. Maybe they were mad at Robbie and would try to kick him out the club. The group walked through the residential streets until they came upon a small neighborhood playground called Willow Park. It had an old slide, swings, and a rusted merry-go-round. There were tall trees surrounding the park that led into a forest. The club went into the forest. Robbie followed them further into the trees. He hid behind a tree and peeked when the group had stopped walking. He followed, uh, sorry, he spotted Sabrina talking to someone. Robbie couldn't see who it was because the person was blocked by a tree. Then the person stepped forward. It was Mr. Renner. Robbie's eyes widened as his pulse sped up. Mr. Renner wasn't the principal anymore, but... He was still meeting up with the Fazbear fan club, outside school grounds, in the woods. Something was very wrong. He watched Mr. Renner kneel down and run his fingers through the dirt. Okay. The members surrounded Renner, listening to him intently. The weird thing was there were no smiles on his friend's face, no laughter, no expressions at all. Mr. Renner showed the dirt to the club members. They kneeled down as he did. What were they going to do? Dig something up? He watched the kids run their fingers through the dirt, then gather the dirt into their hands. He could hear bits and pieces of Mr. Renner's voice. The dirt is very important. It will help immunity against animatronic toxins. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> That's so weird. Mr. Renner stood up and looked down at the children, his shoulder broadening. He spoke in a dem demanding tone. Eat it! <laughs> what? What? Um... The moment he said that, the club members started digging into the dirt like rabid animals. Robbie watched Sabrina and Daniel eat a mouthful of dirt. Then he watched in horror as the other club members ate the dirt one by one. Mr. Renner nodded and had looked pleased. Sabrina stood up and looked at the club members eating dirt and smiled. Um, there was dirt, all in her teeth. Robbie's heart was beating fast. This was too weird. This couldn't be happening. Maybe he did have trouble distinguishing fantasy from reality. Scared, he crawled away from his hiding spot until he could get on his feet to run. As fa He ran as fast as he could toward home. We're over halfway, okay. It comes to him later in the day, shivering his timbers. This was so much worse than Renner taking money from the school. What he'd watched had seemed so strange and horrible that he didn't think he could tell his parents. Robbie had in fact gotten Mr. Renner fired, according to his mother. The initiative wasn't approved by the school board district. Mom had sat next to him and gave him a hug, thinking he was upset about Mr. Renner leaving, but really he'd been upset about seeing Mr. Renner making his friends eat dirt. <laughs> Incredible quote. He goes to call his friend Dyson during bedtime to tell him what he witnessed. Why are we talking so late? If my parents find out, I'm busted. Look, same here, man. I saw something really bad today. Robbie told Dyson everything. Are you making this up? Dyson wanted to know. No, Dyson, I swear on our friendship, Dyson. I saw it, and it really happened. Dyson believes him. That's just gross. Yeah, I know. But I'll have to wait until Monday. Or maybe this weekend I can go by Johnny's house. I know where he lives. Why does it keep doing this? Uh, okay. I would help too, but I have game and practice all weekend. Dyson sighed into the phone. It's okay. I'll let you know how it goes. Dyson? Yeah. Thanks for believing me. It was... Really weird watching it happen. Hey guys, do you remember that scrap story for Tales 5? The one with Drew in the newspaper? Taking some creative liberties in a series of articles for his school newspaper shows Drew that truth really can be stranger than fiction. Ooh. Ooh. Truth can really be stranger than fiction. <laughs> These books are great. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's why I know you're telling the truth. Truth is stranger than fiction. My mum says that all the time. <gasps> His mum is Drew? No, I'm joking. Uh, Saturday. Absolutely nothing happens on this day other than he goes to Johnny's house and asks if he's there, but his mum says he's sick. Before he leaves, he caught a glimpse of Johnny looking at him through the window. Hmm. Monday. I came by your house this weekend. Johnny squinted at him. Yeah, that was weird. You never come to my house. Yeah, I just wanted to see... um. How you were feeling. Your mum said you weren't feeling well. Johnny shrugged. I was okay. Lol. Did you eat something bad? Johnny's expression is blank. I feel fine. This is where insanity comes in. Do you know where Nathan is? I didn't see him come in today. Johnny scanned their homeroom. Don't know. Hope the animatronics didn't get him. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds so ridiculous out of context. I mean, all of it is out of context, really, because we have no freaking idea what's going on. Um, wait, don't know. Hope the animatronics didn't get him. What did you say? He asked Johnny. Johnny sat down but didn't answer him. He started to rub the tips of his fingers. Robbie realised there was redness beneath Johnny's fingernails. What happened to your fingers? This is what I meant by the story has really, really good freaky moments. Johnny didn't respond. Instead, he lifted his hands, spreading his fingers out. There were a few tiny lines of red on each of his fingertips, spearing underneath his fingernails. Ugh. Johnny looked at him intently with wide bloodshot eyes. We had to poke the needle under our nails. We had to, to protect ourselves, he mumbles. It's a secret, though. Don't tell anyone. It's a secret, Johnny muttered again. A shiver went down his back as he moved away from Johnny's intense gaze and sat down for class attendance. Ha. Huh. Is all of this, is all of this Johnny speaking? Okay, I think that's all G Johnny speaking. That would make sense. So, okay. So that's what happens when people look at each other. <laughs> that's what happens when people look at people intently in the story. They kind of 
start getting possessed or something. Like, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Uh, Shiro went down his bag as he moved from Johnny's intense gaze and sat down for class attendance. Tuesday. Uh, Renner is... TLDR, Renner is manipulating these kids to not only give him money, but eat dirt and harm themselves with needles. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I did not think that this is where the FNAF... Uh, this is where FNAF would go in uh, 2022. Nathan came to class that day. Like Johnny, he was acting strange, staring at the clock throughout the entire class period. Unmoving, his gaze locked on the clock. As he was putting his notebook, uh, his workbook away, he spotted Johnny gazing at the clock too. The clock hit two o'clock. He spotted Nathan move first, then Johnny. They each pulled out small tin boxes from their desks. The boxes were the kind used for small mints. They opened the box, and as Robbie gazed inside, he saw something black and moving. A beetle? They did exactly what you think they would do to the beetles. Now, I'm not going to read over most of this again because I do have an irrational fear of bugs. And really, an irrational fear of bugs. This can be too much for me. So, to summarise, the entire homeroom began eating beetles too. They had their own tin boxes except Robbie. Hmm. Interesting. He turned around at Mr. Gustin as he walked in. He had to stop this. Stop. He had to stop this. But he looked back at the glassy-eyed students doing nothing. He turned back to Johnny. He was writing in a workbook and Nathan was now working quietly as well. Robbie swiveled his head around to look at the other students in the classroom. Everybody was working quietly as if nothing happened. After the bell rang, Robbie rushed to the boys' restroom. He was breathing too hard and he thought he might throw up. He managed to get to the sink push on the cold tap water, and then splash water on his hot face. Everything is okay, he told himself, and took more breaths. He glanced up at the bathroom mirror and saw two of his homeroom classmates standing behind him. Did you forget something, Robbie? They began to corner him, pulling a small tin box from their backpack. Robbie pushed back against the sink. Um, um, uh, not so fast. You gotta take your protection just like the rest of us. You don't want to infect us all, do you? They pull the beetle out and try and force him to eat it. But of course, FF Survivalist is in his name. <laughs> True. Uh, oh, is that foreshadowing? That's, that's funny foreshadowing if it is. Uh, he kicks them away and runs out, the beetle falling onto the floor. He runs as fast as he can to hide in room 13, but the door is locked. A note on the door read, Fazbear Fan Club is cancelled today due to a scheduling conflict. Mr. Finkel's here. Robbie asks him why the meeting was cancelled, and he says he has no clue. He decides to sneak out to school and comes upon Zabrina and Daniel walking together at the school gate. Zabrina is speaking to him. Zabrina told Daniel, Meet at the park tonight. Don't tell anyone. Hold on a sec. And she took out something out of her school backpack. It looked like the same beetle box. I already had one at two o'clock like I was supposed to. Daniel hesitated. You want extra defense to be safe from toxins, don't you? When Daniel hesitated, Zabrina shrugged. Fine, if you don't want to be protected. I do! Daniel immediately plucked the beetle and swallowed it down. <laughs> Daniel walked away as if the taste was unpre unpleasant. Zabrina! Robbie called out. He had to get to the bottom of this. Zabrina! Ah, oh my god. This stupid discord. I hate it. Zabrina! He called out again and ran up to her. Zabrina didn't even acknowledge him. Zabrina, why wouldn't you talk to me? Zabrina continued to stare. Her eyes were glassy and unblinking. Hey, are you okay? A car pulled up to the school curb. Zabrina suddenly blinked and looked around. She looked at Robbie. My right here. I gotta go. She murmured. Wait, why did you cancel the club meeting? He was trying to get her to talk to him, but she said nothing and walked off to the car. Stranger Things music time. That night, he locked up his house and took his bike, turning its flashlight on and heading to Willow Park. This has to be inspired by Stranger Things, right? It has to be. There's no way it isn't. He told his parents he'd be at Dyson's house that night and felt guilty for, for lying. He wanted, no, had to get to the bottom of what was going on. What was the thing that, he had, had, that had to be kept so secret? He stopped at Willow Park and threw his bike in the bush, crawling into the woods and wielding a flashlight. After all the strange things, oh my, that it, the fact that that is a quote in the book means it is definitely a reference to Stranger Things. After all the strange things he'd been witnessing, he worried what he'd discover. He begins crawling, using his survival camping skills. He hears nothing but his own breathing. 
and the sound of the wilderness. Uh, he spotted a small light source up ahead and turned off his flashlight. He didn't hear or see anyone, but he saw a small lantern on a tree stump. He went up to the lantern. For a split second, he thought he saw the dim light show flat rocks scattered on the ground, but then he blinked, and the air caught in his lungs as he stumbled back. The faint light revealed the club members... Wait, what happened? I, I must have... I blanked out. He saw a lantern on the screen. For a split second, he saw, so he saw the dim light show... <coughs> oh, why am I sneezing all the time in these videos? Bless myself. Um, scout on the ground, then he blinked, and the air caught his lungs as he stumbled back. Okay, he fell somewhere. The faint light revealed the club members buried in the ground. Oh my gosh! Only their faces were above the dirt, like creepy buried statues. For a brief, horrible moment, he wondered if they were all dead. Panicking, he grabbed his flashlight out from his pocket and nearly dropped it. He was shaking so hard. When he flashed the light on, he landed it on Sabrina. Her eyes were wide open and unblinking. Sabrina, Robbie whispered as he moved closer to her. Her eyes were pinpricks. She had, oh, pinpricks. Just like uh, in Lanny's game. That's, that's like pretty much confirmation, I would say, that eyes are described as pinpricks in this universe. Or prin pinpricks. Is it pinpricks? I thought it was pinpricks. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, she had an expression of shock on her ghostly face. He waved a hand in front of her eyes. Sabrina, can you hear me? His heart is pounding so hard, it's almost deafening, and he's borderline hyperventilating. Robbie flinched when he moved his eyes to Johnny. His eyes and his mouth were closed, making it seem as if they were dark pits instead of an eye or a mouth. For some reason, every other club member has the same expression as Johnny, empty and unmoving, except Sabrina, dread filled through Robbie's body. Empty, pale faces atop the bodies in the dirt. Guys, help! Robbie cried out to them, feeling scared and helpless. But his voice seemed to echo in the night. No one woke up. Now he is crying and panicking. His first instinct just drives him to start digging up one of his friends to see if they're alive. Robbie rushed to Nathan. He fell to his knees and brushed dirt away from Nathan's neck. He reached into the loose dirt, trying to check for a pulse. Robbie wasn't sure he felt one, or if even he was... Feeling the correct part of the neck, he was sobbing. Nathan, wake up! <laughs> um, yeah, Nathan, wake up. He dug more and more. Luckily, the dirt was cold and loose. He was able to dig down to Nathan's chest. Nathan, please, can you hear me? Robbie reached out his hand in front of Nathan's mouth and didn't feel any breath coming from him. He's now doing CPR, doing the best he can. He refuses to believe he's dead. It worked. Nathan's eyes darted open. He was grasping for breath. He stared at Robbie, wide-eyed. Robbie? Nathan began to quickly crawl himself out more from the dirt. Somehow, Nathan is no longer under this spell after being revived, and he is, in fact, scared out of his mind as much as Robbie is. Nathan pulled himself from the mound, then he collapsed to the ground, collapsing and grasping for breath. Nathan, are you okay? Are you up? Can you talk? We need to help the others. Help! <laughs> Nathan repeated. He looked around at the club members and really seemed to awaken. Oh my gosh. Come on, help me with them. Robbie told Nathan. They're now going to help the others. They start with Tina. Stuff gets real, okay. As Robbie rushed over to Tina to try to help her, Sabrina suddenly lifted out the ground next to her, dirt pouring off her shoulders. She screamed, Get out! Get out! Get out of here! Her look, her look was cruel and intimidating. Her shoulders were moving quickly up and down as if she was breathing hard. It was like Robbie didn't even recognise her. Get out! She screamed, waving her arms frantically in the dark. Then she let out a horrible piercing scream at the top of her lungs that sent Nathan and Robbie running. They both ran off into the night. Robbie didn't know what was up with Sabrina, or if Mr. Renner was nearby. He just knew the club members needed help. Nathan, we need to call the police! His voice echoed as they ran off into the night. Cut to the police station. Nathan, my, my name is Nathan Bates. The officer asked, Nathan, were you buried in the ground? Who buried you? I, I don't know. Robbie's asking him and telling him to remember and re to recall everything that happened. And Nathan is leaning his head into his hands, feeling defeated and lost that he can't remember who buried him. He brought up the animatronic apocalypse and the officer interrupted him. Oh, the animatronic apocalypse. Is that what's going on here? Okay, Robbie, I'll send you with another police officer to check this out. Just give me a minute. 
basically sceptical. I think he's going there with another cop to make sure they aren't just playing a joke. And if they are, they could get reprimanded for it. Okay. Ten minutes later, um, Robbie rode in the back of the police car with Nathan. It was sort of surreal. It made him feel like he was in some kind of trouble. He could tell Nathan was upset and felt like he shouldn't ask the questions he wanted to. Why were you buried? Why don't you remember being buried in the forest? Did Mr. Renner bury you or did Sabrina? Why would you let yourself be buried? The faces are gone, of course. Are you sure this is the spot? Officer Parrish asked. They were all here, see? Tell him, Nathan. I don't know, Nathan said, sniffling. He was crying. When they were back in the police car with Robbie's bike in the trunk, Nathan finally spoke. I remember. I remember now. What? What happened? Mr. Renner said the dirt had healing properties that purged the animatronic toxins from our bodies, so we buried ourselves. The cop saw how young the kids were and assumed it was a, just a prank, and he says he'll let them off the hook this time. Interesting. It cuts to the next morning. Robbie woke up early after a restless night. Dad was leaning against the kitchen counter waiting for the coffee maker to finish. He was doing something with his hands. He was popping... Wait. Dad... Oh my gosh, he was popping a black beetle box and swallowed the beetle down as if it was a pill. Robbie's heart stopped. He ran upstairs, slamming his bedroom door shut. He snatched up his comforter and dived into his bed. Wake up! Wake up! He murmured. He must still be asleep. That was the only explanation. A moment later, there was a knock on his door. Robbie! His mum called. Time to get up. You don't want to be late for school. It, skits, it skips to him telling Dyson about everything that happens as they walk to school, and now horrified he is, and how horrified he is that it's spreading to his own home. His dad had been compromised. Whatever weird thing was happening to the school, to the police, was now happening to his dad too. What if this, What if his answers were at Mr. Renner's house? Interesting. Okay. Um, I have no idea what's happening, by the way. It seems to be some sort of cult, right? Uh, I guess it's it's some sort of glitch trap esque kind of thing. That's that's all I can really think about right now. It's it's kind of like that all. That doesn't really make sense though. It is going back to the the old theory of like the cult glitch trap. Like glitch trap is gonna make a make an Afton army that kills people and stuff. An animatronic apocalypse, if you will. Um, yeah, that's interesting. What I, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, this this I love the existentialism. But I don't like it when it doesn't make sense. Like, the existentialism, I think, in Under Construction was absolutely beautifully done. You really felt that Maya was, or Maya was, like, all alone in the world. And I loved that aspect of it. This is just weird. <laughs> but hopefully we get an explanation. I'm really hoping we do in the, like, few amount of pages we got left. So Ren is a rich guy. His house is recognisable due to the expensive car. Now there's a lot of filler I'm going to leave out, which is just him breaking into Renner's home, but his house, the interior is old. When Robbie entered Mr. Renner's house, it was extra warm, and there was an underlying smell of something putrid and stagnant. The kitchen was out of date with mustard yellow countertops. A rusted stove was on one side of the kitchen with a scratched up refrigerator. There was a pile of dirty dishes in the sink that smelled of rotten food. He saw red spray cans and empty beetle boxes. Wait, did he hear voices? Robbie stepped closer to the kitchen hall and heard Mr. Renner talking. He's sneaking closely, putting his backpack down as not to alert Renner. He took his bag off in order to not make as much noise and set it down uh, on the kitchen floor. Suddenly there was a hard shove uh, on Robbie's back. Robbie went flying into the dining area. He skidded on his hands and knees onto the fuzzy carpet and quickly got to his feet. Well, what do we have here? He looked up. The voice speaking belonged to Mr. Renner, but he wasn't looking at the face of him. Mr. Renner was sitting at the end of a long dining table, wearing a rubber Fe Freddy Fazbear mask. All of the club members sat at the table with him. Oh my god. Their stares were eerie and dull, as if their individual personalities had been wiped clean. What do you have to say for yourself for breaking into my home? Animatronics need to be taught a lesson, Mr. Renner said. Animatronics need to be taught a lesson, Sabrina repeated. Her expression was deadpan, distant. Taught a lesson, Daniel mimicked as he stalked Robbie. The kids stepped closer, forming a circle. All the kids surrounded him. 
You could see their eyes were wide and, wa and round, as if they were in a weird daze. Everyone stands up from the table. They begin slowly walking toward him, cornering him in the living room. Robbie cries out to the friends who are no longer who they used to be, telling them it's not real, as the last means of hope. He is then plummeted right up against the fireplace. Someone charges at him. Instinctively, he grabs a fi fire poker right next to him by the fireplace and shields himself with it. He opened his eyes to see Mr. Renner impaled by the fire poker. Mr. Renner stepped back, all the club members stunned. Black liquid spewed from his stomach. Oh my god. Black liquid spewed out of his stomach. He stood, grabbing his leaking stomach and stumbled down the hallway until he was out of sight. What? <laughs> The other club members have suddenly been lifted from the curse except Zabrina. Zabrina calls him a loser and they all dart out the house. Robbie's a dumbass though. He's guilty because, well, he's a child. He doesn't want to deal with the knowledge he killed someone. So he goes back into the house. He picked up the fire poker again. The tip dripped with dark liquid, but it didn't look like blood. <gasps> this is great. This is so good. The dark substance on the carpet continued into the shadows. Mr. Renner? He called out. The end of the hallway was a closed door with a light peering from underneath. Robbie walked down the hallway, gripping the poker as tightly as he could. The closer Robbie got to the room, the more he began to tremble. When he opened the door, he smelt the same stagnant smell. All at the same time, he smelled something else as well, like a strong cleaner, or maybe it was gas. The bedroom was a large. Oh, sorry. The bedroom was large. A big bed with an old-fashioned orange comforter was off to the side. With, to the right with the side table and the lamp. There was an ancient television at the foot of the bed with a single closet door to the left. Oh, believe me, it's not oil. Mr. Renner swung the closet door open. He was no longer wearing the mask. The mask was gone. His hair stuck up in crazy rays. The black substance had stained the front of his ripped white shirt. His veins bulged at the surface of his skin. His face was deathly pale. And his eyes were swallowed by his dark pupils. Some amazing writing right there. Darkness took him over. Dark sweat dripped down his forehead. His lips were nearly white as they parted. A line of black drool hung from his mouth. I, I, I love this writing. This is brilliant. This is great ex existentialism and, uh, and, uh, and kind of creation of a monster. Um, Renner charged at him with his bare hands. He's livid. Mr. Renner didn't stop as he forcefully lunged toward Robbie and once again into the poker. To explain what his reaction is, he's unfazed by this. It was like he was no longer in his right mind, as if he couldn't feel the pain. He continued to grab at Robbie, latching onto his arm, crushing his bone. Robbie screamed from the searing pain, tears stung from his eyes. He stabbed Renner once again, more black liquid oozed from his wound. Robbie screamed in pain, and with one single struggle, or one quick struggle, he managed to stab the poker right into Renner's eye. Renner let go. Renner began to convulse. He fell to the floor, gurgling and contracting as the weird black liquid seeped from his wounds. Yeah, Robbie ran out of the house. It skips to later in the day. The police surrounded Renner's house, but for some reason Renner's body is missing despite the black liquid being all over the place. Even Robbie was covered in it. When Robbie went home, he began having nightmares that didn't make sense to him. It's not described what they were other than they were indecipherable. Hmm... It's not described what they were other than they were indecipherable. That's interesting. Through the week, Robbie is traumatised. He barely speaks and asks his mum if Mr. Renner is going to come back to get me. He's left home to recover for a few weeks. Eventually, life was well. Sabrina supposedly moved away and that curse that Renner had supposedly inflicted was now gone. The club members treated Robbie as if he was a hero and also gave him space. Renner, as of now, is missing still, and a new principal has taken charge. The last scene is now Robbie talking to Dyson at the lunch table. Dyson explains to him that he it inspired him to finally tell his parents that he no longer wanted to play in sports, and rather wanted to be a normal kid. They apologise for pushing him and now has free time. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, well, I can't go to the Pizzaplex for a while. His parents are granting him to keep him from sneaking out and getting hurt. Does that mean you'll restart the fan club with me? Dyson nodded. Yep, I'll have some extra time during the week now, alright? Robbie smiled. It's going to be so much better this time round. I know it. Dyson eyed him. But nothing too serious, okay? Just having fun with roleplay. What's on the agenda today? Well, we're going to be doing food drives. Maybe help out the local community. We want it to be a good start. 
Robby then stared off into the distance. And we have to prepare for the animatronic apocalypse. Oh my god. I don't know why, but I felt a little bit... I, I, I felt melancholy reading that ending part. That was... Oh, that was a roller coaster. Okay. So that is animatronic apocalypse. Story two in submechanophobia. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Let me just try and collate my, my thoughts right now. L let me just read this last part. Uh, I am too stressed looking at this chat to explain what this means, other than I'm going to be doing the first quarter of Bobby Dots uh, here. Cool. Uh, if the story was stowered to you, there's a reason I've been keeping the next story a secret. Let's just say, if you really want to immerse yourself, explore the security breach Pizzaplex as I read. See you then. Whoa, real? Oh my god. I reckon Bobby Dots is going to be the biggest story. Like, just just the biggest story we've ever had in Five Nights at Freddy's, I reckon. Little preview before later. Okay. Um, let me just just read this preview because I'm so excited. And then we'll just talk about, um, we'll talk about Anatronic Apocalypse. So, compared to the greener grass of the majestic tower, this room was a weed-infested wasteland of yellowed scrub. The grey painted walls were decorated only with the Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex logo and a few curling Freddy Fazbear security posters. Okay. Hmm. Alright. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right. Let me read N. Tom's explanation because I think I, I have somewhat of an explanation, but I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> Nobody likes being wrong, so I'm, I'm not going to make a fool of myself on this video. Uh, thank you, by the way, for sticking with me. I actually don't know how long I've been recording, but I know it's a lot longer than I usually do. Or at least it's felt like that. So, it's understandably confusing. This was not Eleanor. It was made of the same evil presence that gave Eleanor life to become powerful. This isn't her. And Tom, you're totally right. Uh, like, that is such a brilliant sentence that you've just said right there. That is beautifully well put, okay? Uh, I Were people actually thinking this was Eleanor? No, there's no way this is Eleanor. But I was relating the black kind of ooze, the black liquid or whatever, to a lot of different aspects in the Fazbear Frights. There was, I believe there was like in in... In one of the epilogues, uh, I think it was Detective Larson goes to see Margie from The Real Jake. And Margie's like, hey, come and have a look at this closet in this kid's room. Obviously, the kid's room was Jake's room. And in the closet were, were all these black markings. And the other thing I want to say is there is a part in Step Closer, right at the beginning, actually, where, what is it, Pete? Pete, he, he's going to the back room or whatever to, to scare uh, Chuck with Foxy. And there's just this weird, like, circle of candles. And I think there was black liquid as well in that story. I don't know. But, but it's like this black kind of ooze has been appearing a lot. And obviously the streaks down, the, the, the tear streaks down the side of the faces from the Stitch Wraith. Obviously, like, that's black as well. So, yeah. Uh, this is, this is very interesting that we're getting more of this black goo. Um, Renner was a person who somehow came enveloped by this evil or dark remnant, whatever, and it tainted his soul. Eventually he became swallowed by the darkness, as shown in the ending, and then he was like a powerhouse, right? Uh, and the others kind of followed him as like a cult. Renner isn't Eleanor because Eleanor is dead. Eh, Eleanor isn't necessarily dead, trapped in a bad memory, but... You're technically correct. Eleanor isn't back in the story, at least. But Rene is his own entity. I also think um, in these books, Eleanor is is gone. Like, Eleanor was the first Beth Frights villain, and she's going to stay that way. Um, Rene is his own entity, powered by the same thing Eleanor was collecting to become whole, as shown in the final epilogue. This is why killing Rene lifted the mind control powers. He was the origin, not Eleanor. Yes. So the question we have now is how did he become the origin somehow became enveloped by this evil yeah so how was he was he did he what's what's his origin story that's my question i think that's going to be the main question that we try, have to try and answer in theories 
This dark force is sometimes called the shadow by fans, and it's something born from William's evil that became stronger than himself. In this case, it made its way into Renner in the same way it made its way into Eleanor. Right, because Eleanor is a physical being. She is a robot, right? She isn't just, like, uh, made of um, Afton's agony. I, I think Eleanor is meant to be like a fun time animatronic, right? And it's just poured... It, it's just got Afton's um, kind of shadow powers or whatever. Afton's evil in it, and that's what made it evil. I want to do a whole theory video on this, because I, I actually think I could talk about this a while. Like, I think this story has actually given a good explanation for Eleanor. Like, I don't think it's that confusing anymore. I think it all makes sense. Renner infected these kids, and it reflected what we know of Afton's morals of killing is... Uh, all that's left is family. He wore the mask at a table with the group of children in reference to that quote. In my opinion, at least. All that's left is family. Yeah, okay. Okay. Other than that, Renner was not controlled by Eleanor. He was like Eleanor, an entity powered by his force, and wanted to infect the others as well. Well, that, that is very, that's a very good explanation, Enton. Thank you so much for that, and thank you for doing the live reading. Um, Ship of Theseus, thought experiment, yes, uh, yeah, cool, Ship of Theseus, um, in one hour I'm going to be reading the most surreal thing to come out, yeah, Bobby Dots sounds like, wait, he's, oh no, he's adding loads of, oh no, oh my god, Bobby Dots, okay, I, but I'm super duper excited, I'm so hyped for Bobby Dots part one, you don't even understand, but, I'm going to end this here because it's getting very long. Thank you guys so much for watching or listening. Let me know what you think about the story in the comments below. I think it's pretty good. I, I, I think there are better stories. But this explains a lot, I think. And is a little bit complicated. But explains a lot. And that's, that's all that matters. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.